Today we will be showing you how to replace a tape drive in an HP MSL 1x8G2 and MSL 2024 tape library. This procedure will apply to all drive types. This means both full height drives and half height drives and all interface types, meaning SCSI, SAS, and fiber channel. Downtime will be required for this replacement and should be scheduled with the system administrator prior to powering down the library. The first thing you will need to do is identify the drive that needs to be replaced. On a 1x8G2, there is only one half height drive, so this would be the drive you are replacing. On a 2024, if there are two half height drives, you will need to determine which has the fault. On the front panel, you will see the drive status displayed beneath the library name. If a drive has an error, you will see it displayed here. Please note, the drives in this library are numbered from the bottom up when looking at the library from the rear. This means drive 1 is the bottommost drive and they are numbered consecutively up from there. The second way to identify a faulty drive is from the web GUI. After logging into the web GUI, you will see the library and drive status window. This status window will list the current status of all drives in the library. These are in the same number order as they are listed on the front control panel of the library. If there is a fault on a drive, it will be displayed here. Please note, if you have drives that have a SCSI or fiber channel data connection, then you will also need to know the SCSI ID or worldwide name, respectively, of the drive or drives you are replacing. This does not apply to SAS drives, as they can only be directly connected to the host and the SAS address is not malleable. You can get the SCSI ID or worldwide name of the faulty drive either through the front panel or the web GUI. In the front panel, hit the right arrow button until you get to the status slash information menu and then hit enter. Then use the right arrow to scroll through the information options. You will see an option for drive 1 information and another for drive 2 information if you have a second drive installed. Select the drive with the error from the list and then hit enter. Now you are in the drive information section for that drive. Use the right or left arrows to scroll through the information for the drive. This will include the firmware, serial number, and the SCSI ID or worldwide name, depending on the interface that you have. Alternatively, from the web GUI, go under the Top Identity tab and then the Drive sub-tab. Locate the faulty drive in the list and then ensure that you notate the SCSI ID or worldwide name for the drive that is displayed in the information listing. Once you have identified the position of the faulty drive, you will need to power down the library. Please be advised, the maintenance manual for this library states that you can simply put the drive offline and replace it with the library still powered on. However, in our experience, this procedure more often than not causes the library to freeze completely and require a reboot, so our best practices are to schedule downtime and power the library off to replace the drive. To power down the library, push the power button and you will see a message pop up on the front panel stating that the library is powering down. Release the power button and allow the library to power down completely and the screen will go dark. Go around to the rear of the library and locate the power cord. Unplug the power cord from the back of the library so as not to cause any electrical charge that may damage any components of the library while you are replacing the drive. Once the power cord is disconnected, locate the faulty drive in the library. Disconnect the data cable from the faulty drive. Then you can undo the thumb screws that hold the drive in place. If you are replacing a half height drive, there will be two thumb screws, one on each side of the drive. If you are replacing a full height drive, there will be four thumb screws, two on each side of the drive. Once all thumb screws are loosened, you can pull the drive straight back and out of the library. You are now ready to install the replacement. Carefully line up the replacement drive with the black guide rails in the empty drive bay. Slide the drive in until you feel it make contact with the back plane of the library. Then push firmly to seat the drive completely and tighten down all thumb screws to secure the drive in place. Now reconnect the data cable going to the drive that you replaced. Plug in the power cable to the library and then go around to the front of the library and hit the power button once to power the library on. The library will now initialize. This will take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes depending on if it is a 1x8G2 or a 2024. When it is finished initializing, the library will display the library name and the drive ready status below. At this point, you will need to ensure that all drives listed are showing as ready. 
Alternatively, you can look in the web GUI of the library and ensure all drives have a ready status next to them in the status box. If the drive you replaced has a SCSI data interface, you will now need to set the SCSI ID to the same as the faulty drive had been. To do this from the front panel, go to Configuration and then scroll to change either Drive 1 SCSI ID or Drive 2 SCSI ID, depending on which drive you replaced. If the drive you replaced has a fiber channel interface, you will need to get the worldwide name of the replacement drive. To do this from the front panel, hit the right arrow button until you get to the status slash information menu and then hit enter. Then use the right arrow to scroll through the information options. You will see an option for drive 1 information and another for drive 2 information if you have a second drive installed. Select the drive you replaced from the list and hit enter. Use the right or left arrows to scroll through the information for the drive until you get to the worldwide name. You will need to give both the original and replacement worldwide names to the person who administrates the fiber network if the drives go through a fiber switch before going to your host system. This way the administrator can update any zoning as needed. You may still have a message in the web GUI that says media attention or an amber light on the front panel of the library. When a tape drive goes bad, it will usually start marking tapes as bad within the library. Unfortunately, the 1x8G2 and 2024 are not smart enough to know that the drive has been replaced and that the tapes are actually good. So at this point, you will need to remove any tapes that the library has marked as bad in the web GUI and allow the library to inventory itself without those tapes. Then the media attention error should go away. While the library is inventorying itself, you should take time to physically inspect any tapes that you removed that had been marked as bad. You are looking for any physical issues with the tapes that may have caused any errors. Once you have verified all tapes, you can reinsert them normally into the library. You will now need to reconfigure your backup software to be able to use the drive or drives you just replaced. All backup software handles this process differently. For our purposes, since we use Symantec Backup Exec, we simply need to restart the services to allow the tape services to detect the replaced drive or drives. Your backup software procedure may be different. Any questions should be directed to your software support or manufacturer. If you are still seeing an error on the drive after replacing it, or you have any other issues, please open a ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA Video Production Team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.